My name is Bruno Turkley. I'm a cloud engineer at Microsoft and today I'm going to talk to you about running a swarm cluster, a Docker swarm cluster in the Azure Container Service. So we're going to go ahead and deploy from the command line. In addition, we're going to run a couple containers that are web-based. We'll go into a browser, test those out, so you'll get a full kind of presentation of what it is to provision a Docker swarm cluster and actually run some containers in that cluster. So here we are at GitHub where we want to start working with the Azure Quick Start templates. If we scroll down, you're going to notice that there is some Docker Swarm ACS type of templates here. In fact, towards the top really, here we go. 101 ACS Swarm, that's the Azure Container Service. And here essentially I've downloaded two files, Azure Deploy, I called mine Deploy, and then Azure Deploy.Parameters.json, I call my Parameters.json. So let me show you those files on my local um, Linux VM where I'm doing the provisioning. On that VM, I've also installed the Azure cross-platform tooling and the Python SDK. You can see that in some of my other videos here on YouTube, so I'm going to skip that part for now. Now that we're at the command line, I've downloaded those files. Let's take a look at these two files. We're talking about Parameters.json and Deploy.json. A little bit of a spelling mistake. It should be parameters with an E there, but close enough. We'll get it right when we do the code. Let's do a quick ls ltr and see what's in there. Sure enough, those are the two files, parameters.json, spelled correctly, and deploy.json. So that's gotten us pretty far. Now, let's go ahead now and check what we need inside of this parameters file. Of course, the parameters file is where we fill in values that we want the cluster to reflect. So the naming of stuff, the password, SSH key, stuff like that, we need to have that entered into parameters. Let's take a look inside of parameters, kind of poke around at the things we need to provide. You can see a bunch of different values here, like the name of the swarm here, BTACS swarm. Um, there on line 6, the, the user ID, line 15, the orchestrator type, it's not Kubernetes, it's not DCOS, it's Swarm, and here the master and agent counts. Well, we, we probably want more agents than master, so we're going to fix this and put perhaps um, a better value there, perhaps 3, and then over there for the master count, let's go ahead and put 1, makes more sense. Hey, we need an SSH key, a public SSH key. I'm not going to review how that works. I'm going to show you the one that I've created previously. This is pretty easy to find. You're basically going to go into the SSH folder, .SSH, and grab the ID underscore RSA.pub file, as you see here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I need that because I'm going to paste it into the parameters file here in a moment. So we got that copy to the clipboard. Let's return back to parameters.json and fill in, fill in that um, key. So we're going to go ahead now and fill in the rest of these parameters, make sure they're correct. I believe it's everything that we would like. So there's my SSH key. I think we're good to go. Um, and at this point, we're ready to start the next phase of this deployment. So let's quickly scan parameters.json um, just one last time, make sure that it's filled out correctly. And I believe it is. We have everything we wanted, namely the SSH key and the cluster name, the number of uh, agent nodes and master nodes. Yeah, things look good here. I look at the DNS prefix. That will be the name of my um, cluster that we'll later see reflected in the name of VMs and so on. So this thing looks good. We're ready for the next step here. We need a resource group. A resource group essentially is a container for all our infrastructure. All the load balancers, the master nodes, the agent nodes, the network cards, all of the stuff lives in a resource group. And, and the resource group can be used to control the life cycle of our swarm cluster, meaning that if I delete the resource group, it deletes everything inside of it. So think of it as just a container for our infrastructure. So we're going to do a command called the Azure Group Create command and pass in the name of my resource group, which is going to be bt-swarm.resource group. Now, naturally, I need to provide a location, the data center. So I'm just going to say here maybe um, central um, US here for that. And there goes the creation of the resource group. It's empty now, so I think the next step really is to create our swarm cluster using the deploy.json file and the parameters.json file that we just saw. We didn't look in the deploy.json file because it's pretty much got the standard definition for a swarm cluster. Typically, it's just the parameters file. So here you see the Azure group create command. I'm passing in the uh, resource group name, 
the region where I want that um, cluster to live, and of course the deploy file, the deploy.json, as well as the parameters.json file. So this thing will take a few moments to execute, and what will result is a Docker Swarm cluster. We can basically now go to resources.azure.com for my subscription, you know, log in and the rest of it, and go take a look at what got provisioned here. So we go here to my subscriptions. I have just one. I'm going to expand this out and get to the resource group of BT, BT Swarm resource group, RG there, you see it. And now we can kind of see the uh, various uh, machines that made up my cluster. What we're interested in here, and I'm not going to describe what it is, it's the master node, the node that does the running of containers and schedules, all the um, images to be downloaded and run here. And if you can see here, we need the name of that master node because that is the way we're going to control the cluster. So we go here to container services and we're going to grab out the management node, the master node, if you will. There's the URL of that node. We're going to copy that because we're going to tunnel in. I've described tunneling in previous um, um, videos, so I'm just going to assume you know that the tunnel allows me to connect up to my cluster easily from my Linux VM. And the command is pretty straightforward here. Here's a website that can help us. Essentially, I'm going to do an SSH and pass in the uh, URL of my uh, management node, my master node in the Docker Swarm cluster here. There's some special ports here that Docker likes, 2375. Here you can see the example. I'm going to paste in, of course, the management node for my cluster. I'm not going to use the one that is in the example naturally. So let's go ahead now and establish this um, tunnel to the Swarm cluster. And of course, it's the master nodes, not the agent nodes. The agent nodes is where we're going to run the workloads. So this command you see here, the SSH, we're going to create a tunnel from the current VM that we're executing at to that master node because later we're going to end up issuing commands to run containers against the master node. This is a way for the admin to actually run containerized workloads. Okay, so that's complete. Let's go on to the next step here. And we want to, what we want to do is fill in this variable called docker underscore host. And that really determines that when I issue the commands that they're going to be directed to port 2375, which of course is the tunnel, meaning that anything we s type in as a Docker command goes out 2375 and ultimately to the master node. And the Docker PS just showed us that nothing is running, of course, as we would expect because we just provisioned this node. But now we're going to run, say, a sample node here, a hello world node. And there you can see Yeezy dash slash simple web. That's just an easy um, download of a, an image that will allow us to run it and test it. So let's do a Docker PS. Indeed, you can see that it's running in my cluster. That tunnel command worked, and then therefore the run command worked. At this point, let's test it. And remember that running container is in the agent side of the uh, cluster. That's where users go. That's where containers run. And that's what's running the Hello World application. So we're going to go down here, essentially, and navigate to the port part where we see the agent nodes. That's the important part. So let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit, make some room. We'll go down here to Container Services and go find the agent node. Not the master management nodes, but the agent nodes. There you can see the agent pool nodes. And let's grab that URL because we simply are going to paste that into the browser, and it ought to hit that container that we just ran. And that's the container, of course, that's running Hello World. So that will return back to the browser. So let's go ahead and bring up a tab here in the browser and hit that endpoint. Sure enough, that's the Hello World um, container that displayed that information. Let's do something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's stop that running container and run a container that's a little more involved, something that I wrote that I host at hub.docker.com. Another video shows you how to create that image that we download and run here, but it is a little bit more than um, what we've been seeing so far, a little more sophisticated. It's a Tomcat-based Java application that's a web service. So it looks like we successfully um, deleted that running container. We got we did Docker PS and then a Docker stop command to do that. So now let's go to the portal and download that app that I wrote. Again, it's a simple Java-based application running as a web service. 
It's using the Spring fra Framework. It essentially does a query against a database, a MySQL database, and returns back some JSON to the browser. So this is that application. It's up available for anyone who wants to run it. It's under my um, subscription here at hub.docker.com, Bruno Turkley slash myapp, and version 5.0. So now let's go ahead and do a docker run command and see if we can get that um, application to run. So it's simply going to be another doc run command, dash D for detach the port numbers since um, the browser Tomcat, since the web service Tomcat listens on port 8080, that's where we want to make um, the traffic routed to. So it's running now. We do a Docker PS. Sure enough, this is a Java application that's running. Now we're able to go back up to the browser and go to the agent, and specifically port 8080, because that's um, the input port. And then it gets mapped again to port 8080 within the container. And that's where Tomcat is running, meaning that this query will hit the running container that we put in there, my app dash web service Azure course you can see it worked it did everything it needed to it went to the database and it downloaded the JSON code um, as a string back from MySQL so this video has completed we've done a few interesting things here we've learned how to provision a docker swarm um, cluster in ACS the Azure Container Service in addition we tunneled into the master node and ran a couple of these web-based containers we tested both of them by using the browser. So thanks for watching. Um, I think this is mission accomplished. Let's go on to the next fun video. Thanks for watching, everybody.